Hey, welcome and good morning, everyone. It is 10 o'clock this Wednesday morning, or Thursday morning. I'm just used to doing these on Wednesdays. Uh, and it's time to get started today with building your own lead funnel with Meta Ads. Um, so the question is, well, first, who am I? And then we'll talk about why we're in Meta Ads. Uh, my name is Randy Lober, your growth marketing manager here at Action Benefits. And part of my job is to help you, our agent partners, uh, figure out ways to grow your book. Um, and maintain your book and find those leads that keep you successful and keep us all successful going forward. Part of the genesis of this session was uh, the CMS final rule that came down in April uh, that said, you know, lead gen companies are going to have a harder time doing business because they can't resell information, beneficiary content information as easily. And uh, to be frank, part of the CMS rule that, uh, you know, took some things and services that uh, we could provide or reimburse you for off the table in terms of marketing activities and so on and so forth. Now, recent court cases and litigation have put all of that into limbo. Um, so, the, you know, your our mileage may vary collectively out of this, but if you have the time generating your own lead, uh, this can be a great place to start especially turning Facebook or and Instagram into that engine for you here today. Um, so why Facebook? Why Meta? Why these platforms? Well, there's two key reasons that I think uh, make the case for me. One of those reasons is that uh, about 68% of American baby boomer, boomers interact with Facebook or log into Facebook at least once per month, meaning that the people you are interested in, especially if you're targeting the Medicare crowd, are here on Facebook, they're on Instagram. And there's about 11,000 new baby boomers aging into Medicare every single day. In fact, if not a, a few more now, that uh, data was accurate as of 2021, and we know the population continues to age, so it could be closing, closer to 11,500, 12,000. I don't know, I'm making that part up. But I know that in 2020, there was 11,000 or so. So all that say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we want to work on today is kind of getting our feet wet with meta ads and looking at how we can build a campaign to target people who are aging into Medicare um, and a campaign that can kind of keep your lead funnel fill full year round, especially outside of AEP when business is a little slower. How can you reach those agents throughout the year? And that's really what we want to focus on here today. Now, because I'll be walking you through the uh, platform and showing you some things, I'm going to be doing a lot of thinking here today, which means I'm not going to be looking at camera a lot. I'm going to be looking at the screen. So, so you don't have to look at the top of my head today. I will go camera off for the remainder of the session. That said, uh, you should be seeing a screen that says Action Benefits Insurance Agency. Uh, fret not, though. We are not here to compete with you. Uh, we are here, though. We have a Facebook presence to help um uh, you know, make ourselves known, make ourselves feel comfortable for when agents choose to exit the business and, and sell their book to action benefits or for any referral uh, clients that you might send our way if Medicare or another line of business is not your wheelhouse. People want to know who we are, what we do, which is why we have a, a small Facebook presence. And I emphasize the small here uh, uh, down below. It's also why you might see I have us have a small presence on LinkedIn and a, a small digital digital presence out there as well. Again, not to compete with you, that's certainly not our aim, but we do want to service and uh, do well by all of the uh, referrals you might send our way or any business you might sell to us when, when you do make that decision and it is maybe time to leave the industry for you. That said, let's talk about uh, meta advertising and Facebook advertising in particular, although we'll, it'll leak into Instagram here today. Should point out that before we get started, there are two prerequisites, two things you've got to do before you are able to run ads on uh, meta Instagram. First thing is you've got to have a personal Facebook account. And that personal Facebook account has to be the manager of a Facebook page for your business. So in this case, uh, my personal Facebook account manage it, helped to manage the page for Action Benefits Insurance Agency, which is our retail arm. So you might have, uh, you know, Kyle Reitz's Facebook page managing R and R insurance, uh, Michael Powers, uh, you know, managing whatever you know your agency name. 
lots of, you know, lots of options there. But those are the first two things you've got to do. Have a personal Facebook and have a page set up for your business. If you are not yet there or need some help doing that, please let me know. I will drop my email here in the chat. Happy to uh, spend some time with you and get that all going for you. And, uh, or if you do have one and you want to figure out how to make the most of it, again, happy to have that conversation with you as well. Lobert at actionbenefits.com. So if you have those two things, you have a personal account, you have a business page all ready to go. Next thing we got to do is bring attention to it, bring attention to you, bring attention to who you are, what you can do for beneficiaries or clients in the market. Now, Facebook, to be frank, wants your money. So they make it really easy for you to give it to them. Uh, and they do that by <coughs> uh, having these big blue buttons down here. I would say advertise. You can also do go through creating ads here. Um, but because it's the most attractive thing, what your eyes are drawn to, we'll go with this advertise button here. I do see some hands raised, by the way, from our participants. If you would please just kindly type in the chat or use the Q&A feature to let me know what you need. I'm happy to uh, get to that when we are able. All that said, uh, we'll click on this advertise button here and we're going to be brought a new window here uh, where it's going to ask us to choose our ad type. I want to take a minute to talk about the pros and cons of each of those. Um, all of these, you know, are reasonable ways to spend your advertising dollars, but it's going to depend on the market you're working in uh, where you'll want to go with here first. Automated ads. So going from left to right here. Uh, automated ads are a great start for building awareness for your agency itself or to draw attention to your business page. And the reason why is because Facebook is going to take your post. It's going to take how you talk about yourself and do its best to uh, use robots and machine le learning behind the scenes to put together some ads for you. Um, whether or not those ads are CMS compliant uh, for Medicare uh, needs, is uh, I don't quite trust it there yet and neither should you. But if you're just getting started right, you want to dip your feet in and just say, hey, I'm Leonard Beatty, I sell insurance, not a bad place to start. But if you wanted to get, uh, like I said, tar really targeted in building that agent campaign uh, that we'll walk you through here today, creating the new ad here in the center is where you'd wanna be. You also have the option to boost the post. And what that does is to uh, take your Facebook post and in an exchange, Facebook uh, broadcasts that post to more people uh, that you might be interested in seeing that post. So it's not necessarily an ad that will drive a call back to you. It's not uh, the boot, post boosts might not uh, drive any traffic to your website, but if there is something valuable you're saying, maybe you're educating people about AEP, uh, what they can do, what they cannot do during AEP in that window where you are allowed to educate about AEP, that's an option too. So uh, really general ads here on the left, really specific messaging here on the right, where you have the most control and can create the ad you want to put in front of folks, which is important when you want to stay compliant with CMS guidelines, is creating a new ad here. Starting up top with our goal, you have it option to have an automatic goal where it will kind of choose what it thinks you want to do based on how you've interacted with the platform before. That's an option. It's not the best option, but it is an option. Uh, and down below, there's a few things we'll have to do to really build our ad and really put things in front of people uh, going forward. What I'm going to do here is walk you through some of the different goals here that you can choose and how they might benefit your business. Uh, again, we're going to focus really on an aging campaign and driving leads from people who are aging into Medicare, but there's a variety of ways you can get there and a variety of things you might do with some of the goals here uh, that I just want to touch on briefly. So one thing you could do, and uh, this could be effective so long as you are you have the personnel or the wherewithal to man the phone when those calls come in is you could put a call button right there on Facebook. And if I hover over this, you're going to see what those ads could look like. Uh, there's that call now button that pops up there on screen for you. What that does is put, 
uh, links beneficiaries, links your prospects direct to your phone number. And anytime they see that, they can call you uh, live. Now with Facebook ads and with meta ads, you can control when your ads are shown. So you could choose to send this, to have this ad go only, only during business hours from nine to five or eight to four, whatever the case might be. The problem is all your beneficiaries might be working at that point too. Um, so that you might not get uh, calls, um, or your agents rather might be working there too. So you might not get the calls you want. So probably not the optimal choice uh, for this particular agent campaign, if you don't have the manpower to staff those phones, either outside of business hours when people are more likely to call or throughout the day. You could uh, work on website visitors or getting more visits. Um, these are what Facebook knows about people as they interact with the platform is these people are really likely to click on things. They'll click on everything uh, and see where it takes them. So if you do have a website built with your own lead form built on your website, this can be a great option for driving traffic directly to your website where you have a little bit more control over what they see, what they do, uh, so on and so forth. Um, the visits, again, will help you drive uh, tra traffic there too. The difference between these two is this uh, one is going to be a little more transparent in showing you that you're going to uh, zoomture.com, Z-O-M-T-U-R-E down here. Getting more visits is a little bit newer. It's not as clear you're going to go over to uh, a website. And in fact, there uh, you're more likely to go to a web page there. You could be driving inbound messages if you're active on Facebook Messenger. Uh, if you're just building brand awareness, page likes is an option here for, for you too. It's going to show your ad to people who are more likely to say, give you that big blue thumbs up, right? And say that they want to see uh, more things from you. You can also promote your business locally, and that's going to drive you to, uh, it's going to promote you to people who are nearby, or uh, promote to people who are nearby, rather, uh, which can be a good option, again, for your kind of building brand awareness. Say, here I am, I'm in the neighborhood, I sell insurance. But the thing we want to do, the thing you want to do is get more leads. And so we're going to use this last campaign here. What it's going to do for us is it's going to, um, create a lead gen form for us or walk us through creating a lead gen form. There's some things we'll have to do to get that done, uh, but we're gonna use this to really make it as simple as possible for beneficiaries or prospective beneficiaries to give us their information so we can call them back. Uh, so I'm gonna choose that and click save. And you'll see here that the ad preview is going to change. You'll see that some of the creative here is going to change. Uh, because Facebook knows that I want to do something different than what it had first brought to me. So when we go down here to the ad creative, uh, in this next section of the screen, you're going to be choosing what exactly it is you want beneficiaries to see. Now, if you're going to say st stay CMS compliant, especially with an aging campaign like this, it's a really good idea to use carrier materials. And uh, for this particular example, I'm going to use some materials uh, from UHC, United Healthcare, uh, only because what I really like about what they have available is they, they have videos and short little clips you can play right here in the Facebook feed. And uh, we all know that things that are moving are way more likely to get your attention than something is static. Should also mention that if you choose UHC's materials, right, you're under no obligation to sell UHC to any prospect that comes in. Um, right, you're you're only under an obligation to to you know, do the best by that beneficiary and find, uh, you know, and find a plan that fits their needs. Uh, so just because you are leading with the UHC material here doesn't mean you have to sell UHC when people fill out this form. Just want to make sure we're on our levels up with that. Uh, the text I've copied in here is unalterable. This is what both CMS and UHC have approved for this. Um, <clears throat> see, uh, UHC does a really good job of being prescriptive in what you can do and can't do. And that really is kind of helpful, especially if you're first dipping into Medicare advertising, because uh, you want to make sure you're on the right side of CMS rules and, and don't go too far off them. So I'm using this script here, and you'll see how the preview updates here, although it's not everything that we're, we're going to use here yet. Second thing you're going to do is to choose a uh, piece of media 
Now, what I've done ahead of time is I've looked for one of those videos that UHC creates. This is really focused on um, whether you've recently moved, whether you're turning 65. Uh, so it's focusing on uh, agents or people who might be eligible for an SEP. So I'm gonna choose this video here. And as I select it, you'll see the preview update over here as well. Just so you can see what exactly it is that I'm looking at. Uh, so the video plays in the feed here. And if I click on it, if you've recently moved, you're retiring soon or turning 65, um, it's just loops that over and over again to grab people's attention and drive them back to the phone number here or to fill out the form that we were creating as part of our ad. So that's all good news. Uh, we can choose a thumbnail here. Your headline is what folks will see. Um, I'm gonna wait for that to reload here. But your headline is what, what, what folks will see down here. Uh, this uh, bold down here where it says form on Facebook, that's what Facebook is calling your headline. There's a few schools of thought there. You could uh, simply have your agency name. That's an option here. You could also go something uh, with something generic, uh, like get local Medicare help. Let people know that that's exactly what it is you're doing and that's what they'll get if they fill out that form. There is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, if you were to go around and uh, look at other ads and, and demos and things that UHC has approved, they use that exact language elsewhere. So no, no problems doing that here. Then the next thing you're gonna choose is a button label. The label here, you can apply now, uh, you know, the, is probably not the optimal language here, but you might have learn more or get quote Either of those could be appropriate options here. You don't, have, you can't really customize that button other than to pick something between one of those two. Uh, so let's go with learn more to be uh, precise here. We also have to create that form. And there's some things I wanna call out here in the creation process. So we're gonna name this form and I'm gonna call this the demo lead form uh, from 718. And I do wanna turn on the customized form text. And that's important um, because this form is essentially gonna serve as your permission to contact or your cons uh, consent to contact. Beneficiaries are allowed to submit that contact uh, information from you here or for you here. This does count as your PTC or your CTC, depending on your def definitions here but you've got to let them know that you are a licensed insurance agent and that they're giving permission to uh, contact that. So yes, have a licensed insurance agent contact me about my options. So you'll see the preview headline here. Uh, headline text, we can simply repeat what we had earlier, get local Medicare help, and that is just fine. And then it will ask us what contact information we'd like to ask for. Uh, Full name is always a good thing here. We could ask for phone number, uh, although be aware that beneficiaries are less likely to give those out, uh, at least right away. So email is always an option. I can I, I can choose to, you know, street, uh, street address, date, date of birth, gender, job title, company name. That's not all that interesting to me at the moment. I'm going for a minimum full name and email. Uh, phone number is an option here too. And what that does for me here, if I if I click through the preview over here on the right hand side, one does click on the full. All of this information, their full name, email, and phone number, if they've given it to Facebook, is going to automatically pop up in that form. So all they've got to do is click tap next again, and now their information has been transmitted to you. And anytime someone fills out the form, you'll get a notification in your uh, page's Facebook feed. Uh, you are also probably should have a privacy policy, and I encourage you to talk with your own legal team that associated with your website here. Um, and then that's really, again, if you are uh, someone that does have a web, web presence here. Um, otherwise, what will happen is Facebook's uh, data privacy po po policy will override and be displayed here. If you do not um, so if you do have a web presence, you will want to probably check that box and link to your privacy policy from your web page. 
Uh, and again, please work with your own legal representation on that. It is required by lots of laws to, in order to uh, make sure that beneficiaries know you are, and your clients know you are handling their data appropriately. All of that, I've got a form ready to go here. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna use Meta's Facebook or private, private pol privacy policy here and click save. And now my ad is uh, mostly built. If I were to go back up here to the preview, uh, we would see everything that we have just changed. We would see in a moment, we'd see the video, we'd see the text we copied from UHC, we'd see get local Medicare help and the learn more button right there for us. Uh, so it's showing us exactly what we have built here so far. Uh, before we dig into who we show these ads, I want to uh, check in on the chat and the Q&A, see if there's anything waiting for our attention here. But don't see anything just yet, which is okay too. So let's go ahead then and talk about what's next and how do we figure out who's going to see our ads and more importantly, what's this going to cost me, Randy? Why are you, why are you showing me this thing uh, and talking about advertising spend? Fear not, that's where we'll go. So if we've created our form, one thing uh, Facebook does do to try to be helpful is it has recently unveiled its Advantage Plus Creative Program. And what that does is uses AI and looks at how people are interacting with your ads uh, to really jumble them up or add words, subtract words, uh, choose different images or create its own images that it thinks people might wanna look for. Really kind of cool, semi-terrifying stuff. Uh, when you think about it. But because we are using CMS approved and carrier approved materials for this ad, I'm going to be very careful and turn this one off because I don't want that ad altered, language altered. I don't want to risk my appointment or any disciplinary action from CMS or so on and so forth, and neither do you. Uh, so in this case, because I'm using Medicare specific material, Medicare approved material, uh, I'm going to discourage that option, turn that off. It does ask you whether this ad is about housing um, or if you fall into any other special ad categories. And really what that does is, especially if you're in the PNC business or you have a PNC uh, wing of your business, there are some different rules that come about uh, for Facebook advertising and, and so on uh, that come into play. But because we are not talking about housing here, uh, we're, we can leave that off as well. Now let's get to the fun and kind of creepy part. And we've got to answer this question, who should see your ad? You can choose an advantage, an advantage audience and it's going to pick an audience that it thinks might be interested in what it is you're trying to bring to them. Um, as you'll see here though, it, it brings out Right now, it's choosing any everyone in the United States and ages 18 through 65. So it's going to show this ad right now to a lot of people who I am not interested in, right? If I'm in a uh, Medicare aging campaign, there's only a, a select group of folks I really want to show this to. So for this, I want to choose people specifically through targeting. Uh, so I'm going to choose that radio button here and cue, I use the pencil here to edit my audience details. I, I don't care, so starting with gender, I don't care whether you're a man or a woman, you're gonna be eligible for Medicare. So I do want us to show this ad to all genders here, but here is the neat part. I can lower this down to 13 if I want to. I can go to 50 if I want to, but I'm really focused on agents. I can set this right to 64. So it's gonna show this to people who are 64. It's gonna show this to everyone 65 plus. And 64 isn't just helpful to me yet, but there are a few things that I can do to really make this an agent related campaign. Uh, and we'll get down there in just a moment. Next thing I can do is pick a location. This location can be as large as you want. So you can pick every state you're licensed in or every metro area in those states that you're licensed in. It can be as small as you want. Uh, generally speaking, the larger area you want your ad to be shown to, the more money it will cost you. Uh, so especially for your first foray here, would highly encourage you to think super local. 
So if I were to show this in Southfield, because that is where Action Benefits Insurance Agency is passed or located, that's where I'd go. You can also choose uh, a radius here, right? Um, that would say, how far away do I want uh, from the, the city center do I want to uh, my ad to be shown? So if I choose this 25 miles per, or 25 mile uh, radius rather, I'm getting getting people in Pontiac, I'm getting people in Farmington, I'm getting people in Detroit City proper, getting over to New Haven, uh, some of Windsor. That might be a little too far for me, especially if I'm just uh, starting out here. I, I might want to bring that down to 10 miles and make it a little more local. Right, so it's showing to people uh, within uh, 10 miles of Southfield, that might be a little more helpful to me. That gives me a more targeted spend. And uh, frankly, I know that I am working in my own neighborhood, right? I might not have name recognition out in Pontiac or out in Lansing or out in Flint uh, if I were to expand that radius much. So I might want to stay right here where I'm comfortable, where I'm known. The other things we can do is it's going to suggest some targets for us. It's going to suggest uh, people that are interested in retirement planning. That's an option here. It could, uh, it's going to suggest retirement age, also an option, and upcoming birthdays. But I want to uh, take you through some of the long forms of that here too, so we can take a look at all of the different ways you can kind of slice and dice the people in this 10 mile radius. We're going to browse some detailed marketing here. First thing you can do is take a look at demographics. This is information about the people, their age, their education, life events, so on and so forth. What I am probably interested in here is, you know, Medicare is for everyone. I'm not necessarily interested in education. I'm not really interested in segmenting by income here at the moment. In fact, I'm not allowed to segment by income in the Medicare market. What I can do is there's life events. And the life event I'm really interested in, birthday. Uh, and whether or not they have an upcoming birthday. I can also look uh, at birthday months and, and pick those out here as well. So if I know I'm going to have a limited ad run and I only want to show this to people with birthdays in the next six months, that's possible here too. Um, but I can also turn an ad on and turn an ad off at any point that I might want to. So I've Settling on upcoming birthday and keeping it generic can keep this really kind of easy for you to maintain and flip the switches on and off without a lot of maintenance uh, going forward. So I'm going to keep that one right here. You can also get uh, into things here and look at uh, relationships and things of the sort, who's friends with who, who's engaged. But I, what I also want to know is if anyone has recently moved. Why? Because the ad also talks about people who have moved soon uh, or who might be eligible, otherwise eligible for an SEP. So I've got people with upcoming birthdays targeted. I've got people who have recently moved uh, who are 64 or, uh, or greater here. I can look at their parenting style uh, or whether they are parents, to be more precise. Maybe I do want to target uh, parents of adult children. Uh, that could be a good indication that they may be thinking about Medicare soon. Um, but, uh, you know, slight, it's, that's kind of a trial or error thing. You'd have to kind of figure out what works in your little bubble of the world. You can look at whether people are married or, or uh, divorced or separated or single, whatever the case might be there. Uh, and you can look at their, their work interests here, too, looking for specific employers, job titles, so on and so forth. You can also look for... Uh, specific industries that it lays out for you here if you happen to have a particular niche. Or if, for example, you wanted to run, advertise one of those uh, USAA plans uh, from Humana, you could target that uh, specifically to people who identify as veterans. So lots of different ways you could get into that audience here. Right now, I've got people just who are upcoming birthdays and who have recently moved. On the interest tab, uh, again, I can kind of slice and dice that a few different ways. I can look at maybe I have fitness buffs and maybe I do have an ad that, that talks a little bit about, you know, fitness memberships that come along with the campaigns. I can target people who are into or appear to be into exercise or say they're into exercise here. I can target people by a variety of hobbies, uh, what, what they're into here. And on behaviors, I can look at, hey, do you have an upcoming anniversary? That could be an option for us. Um, 
You can also look at whether they're mobile device users and all kinds of different things over here. Lots of different things you can do to uh, look at folks, lots of different things you can do to kind of pick out an audience and pick who you want to advertise to. But I'm, for this agent campaign, I'm really focused on people who are um, upcoming birthdays, recently moved, and I also want to see if I can find people who are interested in retirement planning, or if I look for retirement here as well, I can look at retirement age uh, in their careers. So I'm really hitting a lot of those key demographics I'd want to hit uh, for them aging into the Medicare program. Everything I have done here saves automatically. So I can simply close this dialogue. It will ask me if I'm sure, and I can say yes. Okay, there are some other options I should mention here too for targeting. You could show your ads only to people who like your page. Um, to be frank, if you don't have a lot of people that like your page yet, uh, that's not that may, this may not help you grow a lot. But if you do have a lot of your clients who like your page and you want to use this as a way to mass communicate to them, saying that AEP is coming up when you're allowed to publicize AEP, um, that's not a bad option for getting in touch with them too and saying, hey, make your plan elections, make your plan choices here. Uh, you can also find people who are, or, or Facebook will find people who are similar to the people that already like your page and show the ad to them. Uh, so if you do happen to have a lot of people who are 65 that are following your page, Facebook will find other 65 year olds that fit that profile and show it to them. You can also, again, keep it just to your local area. Uh, without some of the nuance here that we've talked about a bit earlier. All right, here is the uh, fun and scary part, um, is that advertising is a little bit of a science, a little bit of an art, and we've got to kind of walk the uh, line between the two. What we want to do is pick out where the ad, how long the ad is going to run, and when it will run and how much I want to spend per day on this particular ad. So if you are interested uh, in maybe just a short-term uh, experiment here, right, uh, that has a finite end, maybe you do want to look at something for the next seven days, or maybe you want to give it a little more air to breathe, you can run it for the next 14 days and choose your end date here. If you want to keep this ad running all the time, so people are always being shown age, uh, this agent message and always able to talk to you, that's an option here. If you run it continuously, just be mindful of your budget here. What you'll see down here, though, is an op opportunity to control your daily budget. I can go from $3 all the way up to $500. If I did run $500 a day times 14 days, I'm I'm in for seven grand over the next two weeks. It's probably too rich for, it's too rich for my blood, maybe too rich for your blood here. Um, but what you'll notice here is if I look at uh, the approximate accounts that I reach and the approximate leads I expect to get, those will update as I change my values here. So if I drop this down to, mm, let's say $20 a day and pop back up here to the upper, upper right, it's going to guarantee me that between one and th 3,000 people will see my ad per day, but it's not going to necessarily guarantee me that people will click on that ad per day. Um, so I can kind of experiment with here. And I, if I go up to $35 per day, it gives me a wider audience and some more potential leads. Now, I do have to uh, be real honest here. These are estimates from Facebook. And I have a strong suspicion that they're going to do whatever they can in these calculations to squeeze just a few more dollars out of you, right? Um, so even though the campaign asks for more money, this isn't necessarily exactly what you'll get. Uh, if you do, if you do go up here to five hundred dollars a day, these are pure estimates of what Facebook thinks you will get here. Um, about how many people will see it, how many leads you will get. So just keep that in mind here as well. Facebook, you know, that's a whole whole spiel is getting advertising money, uh, you know, and it's powered by ads and showing ads to people. So it's going to do whatever it can to make you spend a little bit more. If you're only comfortable with $20 a day, that's all you have to spend. That's not a bad place to start. 
if you're only comfortable with five dollars a day that's all you have to spend not a bad place to start because you're looking at people who are in your neighborhood i you know you're going over quality instead of quantity in that in that case so i uh, keep that in mind uh, as you're thinking about budgeting here you do have control over your end dates again you can run this continuously here as well I should also mention that this is a daily budget. And over the course of a 30 day period, uh, you know, Facebook or the over the course of your campaign, Facebook will not spend any more of this money. So if you only give it $70 to spend, it's only going to spend $70 on these ads. Uh, but you may see $7 spent on one day and $4 spent on another day. Um, as it tries different things here. So it's the final amount is always going to be $70 or whatever it is you lock in here as your maximum budget. But it will kind of change that day-to-day -day spending as it tries to find different people who may be interested in what you're putting in front of them. As you look at placements down here, uh, the, the Advantage Plus placements is going to help you choose or is going to let Facebook choose where to show this ad. And what I mean by where to show this ad, um, is it going to show this ad uh, in people's Facebook fa feeds? Is it going to show it on the right-hand side of their feed? So it's going to show us uh, what this ad could look like on uh, their desktop feed, their mobile feed. Uh, if you are scrolling through Facebook and it suggests videos to you, it could show it to you there. So leaving the Advantage Plus placements on is a good option because it makes sure that the ads get to all the places people can see them when they're in Facebook or within Instagram. Uh, previously having a bit of trouble loading here right now, but I promise you that's what it does. There we go. So if someone was in their Instagram feed, this is what they'd see. Um, and that's all the Advantage Plus placements option does is it puts it in places that the ad will fit. So do recommend leaving that one on. And down below, I will ask you for a payment method. Uh, I'm going to hide, I guess, those last four digits of the credit card. And then from there, you're off to publish and your ad is out there in the wild and uh, hopefully drawing people's attention. It'll run for the time limit you said for. It'll run at the budget you said for. And any action you get on that ad, you'll be able to see in your notifications up here. Um, if you are interested in Pardon me. I'm going to cancel this ad here for the moment, uh, just or leave this page uh, because I'm not actually running this ad here at the moment. Uh, but Facebook does provide you some good reporting on how your ads are doing here as well. If you were, when you have a Facebook page and you're linked to it, if you go over to your ad manager, you would be able to see um, an ad some ads reporting, you'd be able to see, for example, how much money you're spending, how much does it cost you to put your ad in front of someone? Um, you know, how many clicks are you getting? How many form fills are you getting? And see a lot of reporting from there. I haven't put this ad out into the wild yet. I don't intend to, because we don't advertise against you, but I did want to you know, take the opportunity to show you what's going on here uh, and you know what the option, option you'll see, what options you'll see here. So, um, that, ladies and gentlemen, is really the uh, our show uh, for for the day, showing you a bit about what you can find within uh, the the Meta Ads platform and what it can do for you, and how it can make the most of your business, and how you can drive some leads for you. I again, those two prerequisites are to make sure that you have a personal Facebook and a business page that can help you run the ads, but after that. Uh, you're off to the races and can really uh, start tinkering these things and getting those leads as you might like. All that said, I promised you 45 minutes of content here today. We're here at 40, which gives us a few more moments for any questions, comments, concerns, or even curse words you might have for me today. Uh, so please feel free to put any of those in the chat while I take a sip of water because I've just been talking for uh, 40 minutes or so. Michael, that's a great question um, on what the success rate of the ads is. And uh, you're not going to love the answer, but it's it's the fairest one I have. Um, the answer is it depends. Uh, it depends on the people you're reaching, depends on your community, whether or not you have active Facebook users in your community, and lots of things. 
generally what we can expect, and as I've talked to agents uh, about their success here, you know, that 20 to $25 rate uh, per range tends to be the sweet spot for them to get, you know, two or three leads trickling in uh, per day. And then once you've got the lead, well, it's really on whatever you can do with that when, when you when you call in with them, right? Um, generally, uh, when we're thinking about cost per click, so how many t so how much money do I have to spend to get someone to click on that form? I I I see a lot of folks weigh in somewhere between seventy cents uh, per click to ninety cents per click. It's not unheard of to go up to a few dollars per click, though, especially if you are in a spot for whatever reason. There's not a lot of baby boomers, right? Uh, so if you're advertising in, uh, let me think of a younger community around here, maybe you're advertising in Ferndale, right? Where you're less likely to see uh, a collection of uh, baby, of you know, a really dense collection of baby boomers, or uh, um, you may have lower performance there. Uh, so that's the the other thing I, I should bring up is it is some census data getting a good idea of where the people you live are or where the people you want to target live and where they work and where they reside. That can be really powerful. Um, so last week I run I ran a session where we talked looked at Census Business Builder and looked at a, a bit about you know where I can find some prospect rich areas for beneficiaries. I, I know for example that Clawson actually in Madison Heights if you're uh, local to those areas are really I uh, have both a significant portion of uh, 65 plus year olds. They're probably 20 to 24 percent, 65 plus, and they have a fairly high uninsured rate in those areas, somewhere between, uh, you know, four and six percent, which is fairly high for the for the time we're in here with you know Medicaid unwinding and so on and so forth. Um, so that might not be a bad area to target, right? If you are local to those areas, looking at Mass and Heights, Clawson, and again, happy to work th uh, through that. Your account managers are happy to work through that some of that data with you. And uh, on our YouTube channel, in fact, is uh, where we, if you want to take a look at that as well. Um, so Michael, uh, not a great answer to your question, but I... Hope that helps a little bit. Happy to chat with more with you if you like. Uh, Kyle does ask a question. Can I do multiple locations with the same ad? So if I want to do a radius in Oakland County and then pick out maybe Kent County over, over on the west side. Absolutely. Um, the, the challenge there, though, is whether you have multiple locations, you're going to almost universally expect to spend more money on those locations. Um, the way Facebook hurt kind of works behind the scenes is it's a bit of an auction um, for that advertising space in the feed. It's a bit of an auction for the advertising space uh, in the video feed. And so essentially it, it, it gives that advertising space to the highest bidder. So if you have $5 per day, but you're splitting it out between Oakland and Kent counties, for example, it may be the case that your ad doesn't get shown off to a lot of people, right? Because you're not bidding as highly or may not be shown to the right people at the right times. Um, so to answer your question, Kyle, yes, it's absolutely possible, but if, if you're expecting to see success in targeting multiple areas, be prepared to spend a little bit more in that, uh, in that instance. Uh, you can even, you know, run one statewide if you want, right? You can run one to all 11 or so, or uh, 8 million or so Michiganders if you want, um, Again, slice down to your audience, but again, your success rate is going to really depend on what you're willing and able to spend and invest in that. Um, so all of those are options, lots of different ways you can do it. But again, uh, you're going to kind of get what you what you put into this here in terms of your investment. Great questions. I am happy to stick around. It is right here at 1045. Um, so if you must go elsewhere, please do so. Happy to stick around for anything else you might have here. Um, you will hear me stop the recording here in just a moment. But again, if you have a few moments, if there's anything you want to ask me uh, offline here, have to stick around for just a few more moments with you. <laughs> 